We're so eager to change the world. But what we fail to realize is that the world is simply made up of countries, states, cities, communities, families, and individuals. So if we truly want to change the world, let's start by becoming our true selves. Welcome to Intrigue. Welcome to Entreatment, where we diagnose the common illnesses in love and relationships. On this episode, we're going to be discussing miscommunication and how detrimental it is to millions of people. In all our years of counseling, this has been the number one problem that we've diagnosed. Hi, I'm your co-host, Dr. Lolita Brown, and this is... Dr. Van Brown author of Love Symptoms and Counselor of Revelation Church. Welcome. Yes! We are so excited to have you guys here. Make sure that you subscribe, that you like, you share, you comment below. This particular episode is very touching to me. Yes. I feel like it was one of the things that I struggle with the most, mm -hmm. which was miscommunication. And so, can you explain to the audience, what is it exactly, what does miscommunication mean? Or what does it mean to communicate? Great, great, great point. I, I, I love this topic simply because mm -hmm. this, the trauma created from miscommunication. So if we want to know what miscommunication is, we mm -hmm. first have to know what is communication. And communication simply is the effective uh, vehicle where your words, your deeds, your ideals are expressed in order for that person to comprehend what's in your mind. Mm -hmm. Because we can't read minds, so our words are the effective communication that gives the thought in which we want to give to someone else. Mm -hmm. But we also think that communication is just words. Mm -hmm. Our That's body right. language is communication. Yes. Our silence is communication. That's so good. So miscommunication happens when there's two parties involved and one has one thought on the topic of a word or the experience of an event. Mm -hmm. And the person has received that information differently. It could be because of familial history. Uh -huh. It could be from trauma. Yes. It could be from lack of ignorance. Wow. But for whatever reason, mm -hmm. the channel has been severed or the antenna is not up simply because there's a miscommunication. They're not receiving the frequency on what's being said. Wow. So you have two people speaking, but on different channels. Yes. Wow. That's so, so even funny. though these are two consenting adults, mm -hmm. fully comparable, sane mind, but because the information that is being expressed mm -hmm. is being poorly expressed or not received well, Yes, there is a miscommunication. I know that has happened a lot with us personally, right? Yes. <laughs> but a lot of times with my family members, with my friends, with my coworkers, we've all like just missing the mark, missing the way that we want to get something across to someone. So let's give them a real life story about someone that we've counseled yes. um, in the past. Yeah, there's, we'll just call them John Doe and Jane Doe. Too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, great family, uh, actually cousins, but they grew up like brothers and sisters mm. and they had this depth of relationship. They were there for each other growing up and as they moved separately, married, et cetera, and life mm -hmm. happens, but here it is, they both came back together in a setting where this Jane mm -hmm. is living from the history of the past. Wow. So she didn't have to communicate in the past her thoughts or feelings on what she needed. 
Right. He automatically knew what was wrong or assisted and inquired about what was wrong. Mm -hmm. It was like they were connected. They were connected. Yes, that's and good. so because of the disconnection, mm -hmm. she was drowning and had a lot of problems and issues going on in her life. And she automatically thought because he was in her arena mm -hmm. around her, he should be able to automatically pick that up. Assumption. Wow. See, assumption is a communication too. Assumption, but it's it's your your you're communicating with yourself, mm -hmm. hoping the other person will understand. See, wow. that is the most biggest disconnect that caused mm -hmm. divorce, that caused um, broken and, and relationships, that caused business par partners to go their separate ways. Because you're assuming something, an assumption is a thought in your mind that you never released. Wow, that's so good. I know the audience could relate to this. How many of you guys, I want you to type miscommunication in the comments below if this has happened to you before. That's so good. So you're, you're, she assumed that he should automatically, how could you not know yeah. that I'm drowning? How could you not know that you see all of this going on in my life? And his assumption was, she has to be fine because if she wasn't fine, she would have told me. Yes. So he's reliving on his history too because they were so close and connected mm. that whenever something happened, she would automatically communicate to him. Wow. But here it is, two persons are living from the past, now grown adults, mm -hmm. having families of their own, responsibilities of their own. Yeah. They have changed. Mm -hmm. in terms of their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So this person is expecting that you should know. The other person is expecting that you should tell me. Wow, that's so good. And both persons are defiant mm -hmm. in their decision. I did, not, I did nothing wrong. Yes. You should have said, mm -hmm. I did nothing wrong. You should inquire about me. What do you think like, are some obvious symptoms of miscommunication in case there's anyone that's listening and they're like have I ever experienced you know having miscommunication with someone what are some like evidence that you could say people can be aware like if you see these things right. you might be diagnosed with a miscommunication <laughs> or <laughs> one of the greatest um, signs or symptoms is broken relationships oh that's so good yes if you're constantly going from broken relationship to broken relationship, mm -hmm. you have to come to the conclusion at some point yes. that maybe it's something that I'm not doing right. Yeah, it's good. Because remember, rich relationships happen when we communicate effectively, but not yes. just communicate effectively, when we have the heart posture to give naturally. Mm -hmm. So. Broken relationships is a clear sign. Yes. Offense mm. could be another sign wow. of broken relationships. Um, trauma mm -hmm. could be a sign of uh, miscommunication. miscommunication. Mm -hmm. um, lack of self-awareness. Wow, that's good. Could be the sign of miscommunication. Mm -hmm. But there's so... <laughs> Listen to me, we could go on and on. But there are so many signs of miscommunication. Mm -hmm. And constantly you're being reprimanded, whether mm -hmm. it's on your job, yes. whether it's in your family, mm -hmm. whether it's in your social life. You're constantly, remember, life has a great way of telling us what we need to improve upon. You know, that's so true because I felt like when I was suffering from miscommunication, mm -hmm. I always felt like I was being misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So I always felt myself defending my, the, the, what I said or how I said it or, mm -hmm. you know, what I meant, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was just the lack of being able to organically communicate what I was trying to say. Right. Yeah. So sometimes we, and the problem with miscommunication is this. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that there's an internal dialogue going on in our heads. But sometimes we don't communicate that thought the way we're thinking it. Mm -hmm. We That's think so we do because we're living with ourselves. <laughs> That's 
And so we say it, but we fail to realize that's not actually what I meant to say. Yes. And so, <laughs> but in your mind, you got it because you're the one who conjured up the information. That's so but true. But the person that's receiving it, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm failing to understand what's happening here. Yes. And so, uh, so miscommunication comes from our assumptions mm -hmm. not being carefully and calculatedly yes. processed with words effectively. That's so good. Yes. I think you're helping us. I know you're helping me. So, so, <laughs> so what would you say are some um, cures to miscommunication? What are some ways that if we, you know, wanted to really get better in this area in our life, because it seems like it's so important. I know for me, relationships depended on it. Business deals right. depended on it. You know, um, my relationship spiritually with my Heavenly Father depended on it. Right. You know, um, and so what would you say are some ways that the viewers can um, start treatment in, in curing miscommunication? Right, well, before we go to the cure, let's, let's, let's give different scenarios on how we could actually pinpoint mm -hmm. and expose, because we first have to expose it first. So good. So let's go into the danger of expectations. Oh, that's so good, yeah. See, the danger of expectation mm -hmm. breeds miscommunication. Mm. Think about it, because I have in my mind, either in my family, I've seen the way my father was treated. I, father treated my mother, but my mother treated my father. So I have an expectation in my mind, this is the way all men operate. Wow. And so I have an expectation that he has to do it this way mm -hmm. or I don't feel loved. Mm. It's a love language. So even though this man is genuinely loving you effectively, there's a miscommunication because you're expecting to receive it the way your father gave it to your mother. Wow, that is so true. So there's even this, there's this, um, it's beyond communication. Mm -hmm. There's this, this philosophy. What is mm -hmm. a philosophy? Mm -hmm. It's, philosophy simply means you fall, you fell in love with your thoughts. Oh, that's so good. Can you say that again? Philosophy means so mean you fell in love with your thoughts, meaning your father did something to your mother yes. and you loved it so much you fell in love with it. So even when another man comes along and he's genuinely loving you, yes. the only thing you could see is what your father did. Wow. So you fell in love with that thought, you framed that thought, and you've made it a tradition. Mm -hmm. So now, anytime someone is not loving you according to that tradition, yes. you feel unloved. You feel there's a miscommunication. Yes. So we first have to understand is, what do you really want? Mm -hmm. So the expectation is, this is what I need. So in order for you to effectively communicate, you have to ask the person that you're communicating mm -hmm. to, what is it that you want? That's so good, because it also reminds me of like my relationship with my mother. Right. She is so loving. She told me, you know, I can do anything I put my mind to. And the moment I got in a relationship, I thought that that's how everybody should speak to me, whether it was my significant other, whether right. it was my friend, or they should always give, always give me praise and recognition because that's what I was brought up with. Right. And that was an expectation that I had, you know, in every relationship that I was in. So you're so right. That's so good. Right. And so what is so good, and I love how you mentioned that simply mm. because People fail to realize communication is beyond words. Yes, so it's good. From the minute from zero to six, social scientists, behavioral scientists, everyone says this is the way human beings from zero to six is where they learn how to process information, yes. how they learn to solve. They build upon it with words and experiences, mm -hmm. but they learn how to problem solve and communicate through those, through those vehicles from zero to six. Wow. So your mother taught you Praise, 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 but no correction. Mm -hmm. My father taught me correction, 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 no praise. Yeah. So when I came to you mm -hmm. and I genuinely gave you my love, it was my love of correction. Mm. You couldn't receive it 
could even not though I was it. effectively communicating it truthfully yes. and effectively, you couldn't receive it because it was beyond words. Mm -hmm. It was a philosophy that you fell in love with. It was your culture. Your, uh -huh. So what we had to do in order to break that miscommunication, mm -hmm. I had to learn, learn your language of communication. That's so good. So good. And that's what people have to understand. Mm -hmm. If you want to reach someone effectively, you have to make sure that you learn to communicate Beyond words, mm -hmm. there's a spirit in every single person. Yes. Even in the way we communicate to God. God wants to be communicated to in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But when we go to God, we treat God like a, a rich uncle. <laughs> every time we pray, it's for things. It's true. Can you pay my rent? Can you true. pay my mortgage? Can you heal my son? Mm -hmm. Can you do this? Can you do that? But we fail to realize in our manual, mm -hmm. which is the good book, God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything mm -hmm. else will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. God is telling us how to communicate to him. He's saying, seek me, <coughs> not my hand. Mm -hmm. But we don't even know what God's face looks like. Wow. We just know his hands because we're constantly asking, asking. And we're not seeking him, mm -hmm. knowing him, building intimacy with him. And That's if, so good because right. that, gives, that makes me think of being an active listener. Right. Like you have to, in communicating with someone, you have to be able to listen. Right. What does listening mean? Like what does that look like or what does that sound like? Listening is, in order for us to truly listen, mm -hmm. I would argue, and this is going to sound controversial, but. Say it. I would say 99.9% .9 of human beings are failing to listen because listening requires, I had the opportunity to sit down with an FBI agent. Mm. And he's not only an FBI agent, but he's a hostage negotiator. Wow. So his whole life is based on listening mm. in crisis. And he said his only reason in communicating, he's not trying to remember anything. Wow. His goal is to simply receive what the individual is saying. Mm -hmm. There's another person next to him that is taking down the data, but his job is to be fully present and to listen. That's right. And he said, in order for me to really, really listen, I had to remove my opinion. Wow. Because here it is, someone That's is... That's so good. This someone has people in hostage willing to kill them, and I have to remove my opinion of the person that's and really, really treat him like a human being, like we're having a natural conversation. Yes. So true cognitive, cognitive listening is the mm -hmm. removal of one opinion. And the hopes, what will make you a great listener, mm -hmm. always approach it from the point of a student, as if there is something that I actually can learn. Yes, that's good. That's such a good point. Right. Because I feel like if I put myself in a position that... I don't have an opinion to what this person is saying, right. but I want to listen to learn, right. then I'm able to receive what right. they're actually saying this without is the my benefit. opinion. Yes. The worst thing, the worst thing, and you have done this to me in the being anyway when we started dating. <laughs> the worst thing a woman could say to a, a man, can we talk? <laughs> <laughs> Type uh, in the <laughs> comments. Can we talk? <laughs> you know, yes. you know that's that's not. We need to that, talk. <laughs> nothing good is going to come out of that for the man. Gosh. It's going to be criticism, criticism, <laughs> criticism. But what if we did it this way? Okay, help us. This is effective communication. Remember, communication is about you putting the person in an environment where they could digest the information that is being given. All right. But if you're going to say something that mm -hmm. is very critical and very serious and could be uh, the potential of a disagreement, mm -hmm. then why don't wait till he's in a good mood? You take him to his favorite restaurant or something like that. I hope everyone's taking Eating notes it, right now. This is so good. Order his favorite meal and then express to him the hard conversation in a loving, mm -hmm. inviting way. But the first so thing good. you do 
is you honor him. You validate the great parts of him. Mm. When you validate the great parts of him, it breaks down the wall and it makes it easier for him to digest difficult things. That's so good. And it's the same thing with a woman. Because like you, because <laughs> I'll tell you, remember when, because my wife used to have a tough time handling constructive criticism because of her philosophy and the way her True. mother praise, 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 no correction. Mm -hmm. So anytime I would come with correction, <laughs> and it would be right, I would be 100% right. And this is the biggest well, thing, guys. I don't know if you're right, but... <laughs> I, I know I was right. Okay. <laughs> but it doesn't matter if you're right. The yes. goal is to be successful. Yes. And so, so because I came to her with criticism and I knew time after time that was not the way she wanted to receive it, mm. I changed my strategy and I said, I waited until she was in a good mood and I said, do you have time to receive? Mm. Remember, I uh, always yes. say that to you. Yes, you still say that to me. <laughs> That's, That's effective good. communication because yes. If I know someone struggling in this area, That's good. then it would make sense to make it easier for them to digest and receive the information. Remember, the goal is to be an effective communicator. But you know what I will say is that when you did that for me, um, it made me be able to gather my loans, <laughs> gather myself, and mm. really be able to listen to what it was that you had to say versus before if you would have just came and said whatever it is that you were saying, I felt like I had to be defensive or right. I had to prove my point or I had to, you know, like it, it became like a battle almost. Right. But the moment you said, do you have time to receive constructive criticism, it allowed me to say, okay, there's something in me that my husband see that I need to work on. Let me receive it. Because mm. ultimately, I think everybody's goal is to be better, is right. to be a better version of Hopefully. themselves. Yes. And, and so you gave me that opportunity to be better when you did that. Right. So. But see, the problem is we come from homes where this avenue and mm. this particular thing was not focused on. Yes. We don't... Communication is the number one thing in the world mm -hmm. in order for us to get what we want. The way we communicate to God, the way we communicate to self, the way we communicate to each other. We cannot achieve success mm -hmm. without communicating, whether non-verbally, whether yes. through uh, sign languages, whether through communication, whether through the, mm -hmm. the via the web. But still, it's through communication. Yes. But think about it. We, it's not pushed, it's not... Um, I think a lot of people don't study the root of the problem. Right. I think if we go back and we search, like we were talking about um, our family history and right. where we came from, right. but it's not just enough to study the root of it. Right. Like, what are you going to do? What are the action steps? What are the things that you're going to do to change what you've now learned that, okay, maybe like in your family, your, uh, your mother and father never really talked. You know, they right. used to be in a house together and right. you never heard them say, I love you or, mm. you know, be affectionate towards each other. Right. And you noticed that, you saw that it was an issue in your relationships. Right. And then you took the necessary steps to improve and become better in those areas. Right. So what are some key points that you could tell people to show them how to identify the things in their past or where they came from that they need to uproot and, and begin to, ch to change? First thing we have to understand, we have to come to the conclusion that just because you're an adult, it doesn't mean that you're an effective communicator. So true. And women, so I good. want to say this to you with the, with the humblest of heart. Just because you say more words, it doesn't mean that you're communicating better. Wow. Just because you say more words, it doesn't mean that you're communicating better. Mm -hmm. The goal is to make sure that you, whoever you're talking to, understand what you're trying to convey. Ah, so good. And women talk. They don't talk to communicate. 
they talk to release their experience. Yes. And sometimes the man get lost in the experience. Mm. We have to understand who we're talking to. Now, if you're talking to your girlfriend, you could say all day long your experience. If, if you, I'll, give me an exa I'll give you an example. If, yes. if you went to the gym and I was out, mm -hmm. you're not going to say, yeah, I went to the gym, to the gym today and I had a great workout. Man, I, had a, I went to the gym today and I wore my blue tights because, you know, that's my favorite <laughs> tights. I put on this nice music. You're giving me the whole experience. The entire experience. <laughs> right. Man, we just want to know what is it that you're trying to convey. Mm, that's okay. But if you really want to grasp a whole of the man, try to get to the point faster. So good. And men, for women, if you really want her to feel love, tell her the experience of your day. Mm, that's you have so to good. understand who you're talking to. So if I'm talking to my boy, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it straight. If mm. I'm talking to you, I'm going to give you the experience. Because when I give you the experience, yes. I'm going, you feel loved. Yes. You feel heard. You yeah. feel important. I, I'll never forget, there were certain times of the day where I'll go out, I'll be out all day. And yes, yeah, such and such called me. Um, what did he say? Mm. Well, he said that he's going to meet with us on Friday. Uh, that's all he said? <laughs> I mean, how did he say it? What did he actually say? Yeah, that's what I would ask you. But you're right. I needed this, more details. Right. <laughs> but this is the way you feel love when yes. you're communicated to yes. because you want an experience. True. This is a great thing I want you men to know. Mm -hmm. This is the difference, guys. It will save you from a lot of heartbreak if you understand this simple point. That's good. When, women... No, I'll start with the men. Men mm. hear words. Women feel words. So true. That's why a woman could say to the man, you're stupid. And he'll say, I know I'm not stupid. What are you talking about? <laughs> a woman, a man could say to a woman, you are stupid. And it's heartbreaking uh -huh. because they feel words. That's so true. So men... Be careful what you say because they not only hear it, but they feel it. It lingers longer in their soul. Yes. Because that's the way God wired them. So we have to understand who we're talking to in order to, to give effective communication. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is one of the things that you did with me when we first started dating was you asked me a lot of questions. I have to. And it was... At first, I, didn't, I was like, why does he want to know all of this? <laughs> but you kept asking me questions. And then I later found out that you were getting to know me. Because as much as information you just gave about the women like, you know, um, to have the experience and the men like to get straight to the point, mm -hmm. there's actually some women out there that are kind of the opposite, where in they some, just want some, to get straight to the point, you know? Cases, yes. Yeah, so it's so good that you get to know who you're speaking to. That's yeah. an important part in effective communication. Know, ask a lot of questions to find out yeah. how your, your information can land on them. Right. Yeah. Because I, I not only ask questions, I studied you. Yes, I you studied did. the way True. her mother communicated. I studied the sisters. And I realized, okay, I've been going about this the wrong way. Because every time you come around your mother, yeah. praise, oh, man, that Lolita, she's so beautiful. <laughs> she's so precious. She's my million-dollar baby. She is this. Oh I said, God. okay, I see why every time I give correction, it doesn't land. Because you're just used to praise. No, let me tell you a funny story. Back in high school, I uh, modeled. And I remember my know. mother, <laughs> I remember my mother coming to the fashion shows that I was in, and she would be the loudest person in the audience. And all you would hear is, work it, Lolita, work it, Lolita. <laughs> and throughout my whole high school experience, mm. I would be walking down the hallways, and all of a sudden you would hear, work it, Lolita. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was funny, but it's so true. Like yeah. my mom, you know, 
instilled that into me. She, she gave me that life, so to say, in, in believing like I can do whatever I want. And so right. I know some of our viewers can relate. You know, right. maybe it was your parent, maybe it was your uncle, maybe right. it was a teacher, maybe it was a, a pastor, someone that, you know, cheered you on. And then it, it became something that you adopted in your philosophy right. to, on how to communicate. Yeah. All right, there's, and there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. but we need that correction also to, yes. to balance us out. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, my parents mm -hmm. were the complete opposite. They mm -hmm. were silent. Mm. Um, I didn't get the expression. I didn't get, they slept in separate rooms. They wow. barely talked. And so because they didn't talk much, we think that, oh, there's peace. But we fail to realize that silence is also a form of violence. Just because you're not saying anything, it doesn't mean that persons aren't being violated by the silence. Because when we made a vow to each other, the vow was to communicate our love and the expression of it. Mm -hmm. But when there's nothing but silence, you're basically saying to that person in a nonverbal way, you don't matter. Wow. That's so good. I never even thought of it like that. You don't matter because two persons are sleeping in a room. Mm -hmm and there's no communication. Mm. That's why there were, when we first started dating, and when you would get upset with me, as once you got your emotions out, then you would be silent and don't want to talk. Yeah. I viewed that as violence to me, because wow. it means that you're disregarding my feelings, you're disregarding my value, you're disregarding who I am because you're not even willing to express even your frustration. Wow, that's so, so good. What we have to understand, people, is just because you're quiet, don't think that, oh, I'm just trying to keep the peace. Mm, that's it good. is better to actually go away and learn and get effective communication in order to come back and engage. Mm -hmm. Because what is the point of being with someone if you're not going to speak? That's so good. There's no point. I think that it's important that we hold ourselves accountable, that mm -hmm. we do a self-evaluation right. on where are we and how well are we communicating right. with people that we love, that we care about. What is it that you feel people can do right now to just hold themselves accountable or give themselves a evaluation? Like, What are some questions maybe they should ask themselves? Good point. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing we have to acknowledge is who raised me and what was their philosophy and communication? Yes. Mm -hmm. See, I know that my parents raised me and they were mediocre in the way they communicated to me, the way they communicated to each other. But they were great in communicating the importance of hard work. They were great in communicating the importance of making sure you choose your friends That's good. that won't bring harm to you. But because they were mediocre in the way they expressed their relationship to each other, I realized that there were certain things that I had to give to myself that they couldn't give me. Yes. So I realized, okay, this is what they were great at. Mm -hmm. And then these are the things that I have to build upon. And so I realized that I was terrible in my expression. I was non-affectionate, used to complain all the time. You're not yes. affectionate, you're not affectionate. And so the first thing we have to understand is don't wait for the feeling. Yes. If I know that there's a flaw that I need to work on, uh -huh. then I just need to make a decision mm -hmm. to do it. Yes. So... I realized that I was non-affectionate, so I would literally plan it. I said, today I'm going to tell her I love her. Today I'm going to hide some, a That's note so in her good. shoes. That's so it good. It wasn't a feeling. I had yes. to behave uh -huh. my way to success. Mm -hmm. That's communication with myself. I had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So the decision starts with you. I can't allow some exterior forces to dictate how I'm going to show up in life. I can't allow someone else's inconsistency mm -hmm. to dictate how I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. If I have to be love's greatest advocate, mm -hmm. and if I want to be the best version of myself, I cannot let what you do affect me. Wow. And so I made decisions 
So it's not a matter of feeling. It's a matter of do you want to be right or do you want to be successful? And I wanted to be successful in loving you. So That's I had so to good. study That's you. So I had to study you and make sure give you what you needed. Mm -hmm. Then I could sprinkle in the things that I wanted to give. Wow. So you're one decision away from a good communication. One decision away. That's so good. And you yeah. build upon it. Remember, your parents gave mm -hmm. you the best of what they had. Yes. Forgive them. Look at what you have. That's why in my book, Love Symptoms, I have a friendship survey where I said, you sit so down good. and yes. you, you ask the, your best friend, someone not, who's not going to, to coddle you because you only want truth, mm -hmm. and say, when I show up, what do you get when you get me? Oh, Am I violent with my words? Am mm -hmm. I narcissistic? Am I um, mean-spirited? Mm -hmm. What do I get? Because I want to change certain things about myself. So the first thing you know need to do is expose the truth of how you show up. That's good. Once you do that, then you have to actually, the things that you normally would do, you have to do the complete opposite. <laughs> so if I pick up True. the phone, and I'm normally used to calling someone and saying, uh -huh. and telling all of my problems, then the first thing you do when you call, say, forget, don't worry about me. I want to know about you. Mm. It's not a matter of feeling. You're trying to literally destroy that ignorance. And yes. the only way you can destroy that ignorance mm -hmm. is with the truth of yourself. That's the only way we could do it. Look at this scripture. Mm. Ephesians 4.29, mm. do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful to building others up according to their needs, that it, may be, that it may benefit those who listen. I'll say that again. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, mm -hmm. but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Wow. So in this scripture right here, it's all about effective communication. Yes. We waste a lot of time because we want to get our emotional needs met. Oh, you're stupid. I can't believe you did mm. that. We want the person to feel so horrible. Wow. And this scripture is saying, do not let any unwholesome word come out of your mouth. Meaning the only reason I should be communicating with you mm. is to either build or edify. Oh, wow. That, that cuts out 99.9% .9 of our conversation right there. Yes. Because we want, when we're disappointed, we want to let the person know how disappointed we are. So the yes. first 40 minutes is, man, you know how long I waited? I can't believe this. Again, you missed my birthday. And the goal is God is saying right here, do not let anyone That's so some good. Talk. I remember you did that with our relationship. We would... I, argue for hours and hours and hours and then it got to a point where he was like my chest is hurting we can't keep doing this and I was like okay and he was like you know what this is what we're gonna do we're gonna whenever we have a disagreement or whenever we want to talk about something that is difficult we got five minutes to talk about don't, it don't give, don't give them that, that that scenario yet we, we're gonna save that but okay but we Stay learned <laughs> but we learn how to communicate effectively. So yes. we were doing this, and this is the first time I'm actually, um, mm -hmm. for the last several weeks, seeing this scripture. Mm -hmm. But it, it keeps you honest, yeah. because the goal is either to build or to edify. Even in your yes. criticism, you could be building. Mm -hmm. So when I remember when we were talk, I was never, this is another good point. If, you're, if the goal is to build a healthy relationship, never say, I would like it if you can do this better. Remember, we're in a relationship in unison. Yes. I always say to my wife, I said, I would like it if we can. Even if yes. she's the That's one good. failing more in this particular area, mm -hmm. I would say, I would like it if we can do this better. Yes. Because when we say we, it, in, it encourages the person to join in, in the fight. Yes. But if you say you then you're causing me to defend myself. Mm -hmm. So what is the result that you want? You want someone to defend themselves or you want someone to join in on the fight? That's good. And so... We want them we, to join in on the fight. <laughs> and so that's how we would always... So self-evaluation first. Uh -huh. 
understanding what you lacked, what was not given to you. Mm -hmm. And then what about turning your house into a library? You should have at least 10 books on just communication alone. Yes. It's the most important thing in the world. Yes. Then also spiritually, mm -hmm. how much do you communicate with your father? See, the biggest mistake we make is this. Here's what we do. I'm malfunctioning. And then I sit down with myself. Mm -hmm. And I give myself self-evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just that I make, right? So, so it's like... This camera here, probably a black magic. If the black magic ceased to capture this image, mm. I can't ask the black magic, what's wrong with you? Why are you not working? I have to look at the box that it came in, yes. look at the manual. Yes. The manual is the creator that actually gave me the device. Mm. And if the manual doesn't give me a complete understanding, there's a number that I call, and it's an authorized dealer that is tied to the owner of the product, and they tell me how it worked. So okay. the biggest thing we have to do when we're malfunctioning, yes. we have to sit back with our Father and ask our Father, Father God, tell me how do I work? Mm. I'm miscommunicating. I'm mm. failing to love the ones that you have sent me to love. Um, I'm miscommunicating my finances. I'm miscommunicating in all areas of my life. Help mm. me to understand. Then okay. also now, then you sit with people who God has sanctioned to help you in the process of building yourself. That's so good. But you don't go back into unaffected communicators of expecting yes. to be effective. You have to, if you see someone who is growing and excelling in that grace, it makes sense to sit down with them and say, can you please help me get to where you are? That's so good. I think those are some good action steps for our listeners um, on ways that they can improve and not suffer from miscommunication. Right. You know, that, that is a cure um, for the ability to, to grow and, and develop in the habit of being a good uh, per, a person that can communicate better. So I love it. And, and think about it, communication, yeah. there's no such thing as I am here. Mm -hmm. Every single day we should be, uh, even there are some times where I assumed, like even today, we were getting, leaving today, you mm -hmm. thought that I would gra grab this particular bag, oh, yes. and I thought that you would. Miscommunication happened all the time. It's not, how do I make sure that this doesn't happen again? Mm -hmm. How do I make sure that I communicate so effectively? that we don't miss each other. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going to have missteps. The missteps are simply an indicator that we simply need to be more intentional in the way we communicate. So even the missteps mm -hmm. will bring you to a better side of yourself. But the first thing we have to understand is there's no great com greater mm -hmm. communicator than our Father, than our God, than our Jesus Christ. Yes. And when we sit down with him and we tell him all of the things that we're struggling with, but the goal is how do I build this relationship with you? Father, help me to understand yes. the way you want to be communicated to, because God wants to be communicated to in a specific way. Mm -hmm. He will allow our ignorance because we're growing, mm -hmm. but God wants to be communicated to in a particular way. He says, Seek me. They asked, the Pharisees asked him, Moses' law was 646 laws, and they asked him a great question. They said, what is the greatest commandment of their all? Mm -hmm. Because they wanted to simplify 646 laws to down to one. He says, love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and all thy strength. Yes. That's the way God wants to be communicated to. He wants to know that he's number one 24-7. Love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Not because he's a narcissist, because the more you love him with everything, mm -hmm. the less likely you will be broken. That's so good. That, thank you. Like, you just blessed me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this conversation blessed you for the next effective relationship that you're in. We are so excited that you tuned in with us. We 
hope that you join us again. Make sure you subscribe, that you like, that you share, and that you let, let, let someone know next time when we're live because we're going to be talking about different things that are real life stories that right. possibly you experience, whether right. it's unforgiveness, whether it's miscommunication, or whether it's finance. Uh, but we are excited and we're happy that you tuned in to Entreatment.